Good morning. Welcome to the Therapeutic Conversation Show. I am your host, Dr. Jones, LPC in the house. Thank y'all for joining us. I have a special guest here today in the person of my pastor and mentor, Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel. Hey, Dr. Samuel. Hello, Dr. Brown. It's good to be here. You Dr. are in. Jones. Yeah, it's Excuse okay. Me. Look, it's early, y'all. with you. It's early. Well, welcome, welcome to the Therapeutic Conversation Show, where we have conversations around mental health, spirituality, and empowerment. So I have my mentor and pastor, as I said, on the show, so I'm so excited. He's going to be sharing today from the Victory for the World Church in Stone Mountain, and he's going to be talking today about his history, as far as he has a history with Ebenezer Baptist Church, um, you know, from his start, and then also pastoring over how many years? 30, 30 30 what? 30, 32 years. 32 years this year. At the Victory Church. At Stone, the Victory Church in Stone, Stone Mountain. Mountain. Oh, my goodness. That, so he is here, and he's going to be also talking about mental health. He's been an advocate for all the work that I've been doing in mental health. So please uh, tune in. Um, you can also call at 678-528-9482. That's 678 678- Five two eight nine four eight two, or you can send us a message on Facebook. And so I'm looking at the people now. I know people are tuning in, joining in, and I want y'all to definitely join in on this wonderful conversation that we're going to be having, this therapeutic conversation that we're going to be having. So we definitely want you all to join in. So Dr. Samuel, you are here in the house. Dr. Uh, Jones, I'm here in the house. I know. <laughs> See, you doing social media. Isn't that something? All right. So we want to begin our conversation, Dr. Samuel. And, you know, and I just want you to share, you know, I, I have a history um, with uh, Victory for the World Church. I've, you know, over 10 years or so, I've been a, a minister and a member there and just supportive of your of your uh, work, and you know, and, and I'm just going to tell you all, too, Dr. Samuel is a mastermind when it comes to preaching. You know, pastoring and preaching, but preaching, I mean, just mastermind. I've been there, and I've grown so much in my ministry by being associated with the Victory for the World Church and also associated with your ministry. And all the work that you do, um, I just, you know, first of all, I just want to say thank you. Because sometimes, you know, even in this work, we do not get an opportunity. People don't say thank you. It's just the, you know, it's the way our culture is. Sometimes we take, but we never stop time to just say how grateful we are for all the work, all the efforts. And we know that pastoring's not easy. It's not an easy job, but God gives us the strength and the grace to do it, right? Indeed, indeed. <laughs> let, me th- let me thank you, Dr. Jones, because preaching opens the door to people's thoughts, people's emotions. Uh, it helps people to think seriously and reflect on their lives. But then after preaching and after worship, people need hands-on help. Yes. Uh, People need uh, that therapy. People need an opportunity to work out what they've heard in their lives. Yes. And you have done that uh, at Victory Church through your mental health workshops Mm. because you've allowed people uh, to step outside of the arena of worship and step into the arena of personal conversation. Yes. Into personal dialogue which is really where a lot of change and help happens. Thank you so much. And I just appreciate your support, but I receive it. And I thank you for that, you know, because it's, and you did a message. I want to start off with this. You did a message uh, uh, this year, well, last year actually called Dealing with Deep Dysfunctions. And what, and I was there for part one and part two. And I, you began to talk about the stigma of mental health in the church. Um, can you just give us a little insight to that message? And also, please, y'all need to get that message. You know, you can definitely contact, and we're going to give you the contact information at the end to, you know, for the Victory for the World Church. You definitely need to get that message. But dealing with deep dysfunction, and what was the, your thought? What was God speaking to you? Because I know part of it was about mental health, but it was about just dysfunction. Sure. It occurred to me that the biblical writers um, did not have um, what we would call um, an accurate understanding Mm -hmm. of mental health issues in the sense that if a person had a mental illness uh, uh, during the time, uh, persons believed that they were demon-possessed. Yes. So that is already a stigma. Yes. That person is influenced by evil. We know today that it's not that the person was demon-possessed or under the influence of an evil spirit. A person was dealing with uh, mental disorders. Yes. Uh, what we would call um, uh, psychosomatic 
um, dysfunction. You better use those words because that's the <laughs> truth. Go ahead. Yes, indeed. So in the case of the, for instance, the Gadarean demoniac. Yes. Um, uh, where Jesus uh, uh, visits um, and comes into the arena. Uh, this man is antisocial. Yes. He's cutting himself. Um, people are afraid of him. They try to bind him with chains. Okay. All of the antiquated notions of how one deals with mental illness. Uh -huh. And so it just occurred to me that Jesus took an approach that the people needed to pay attention to. Yes. Because Jesus went into the man's midst. Jesus allowed the man to express himself. And Jesus touched the man. Yes. And some change took place. Yeah. And, and those things are very vital and very important when we talk about you know, mental health, and we talk about, you know, in the text, because people think mental health just came out of nowhere, or mental illness just came out of nowhere, but it's very vital that it does start, you know, with life, but it also is in the biblical text that it's, you just quoted. Uh, indeed, indeed. You know, when we love God with our mind, mm -hmm. and loving God with our mind, that means that we have to have the mental stability to do that. Yeah. Because you can't love God with your mind if your mind is dealing and if your mind is trapped in some kind of psychosis. Oh, my some goodness. Some kind of pathos <laughs> that you have not adequately dealt with. You can't then love God with your mind. That, say that again, Dr. Samuel, because that is so powerful. I'm just so glad y'all are hearing this conversation, and you definitely, we already on it. <laughs> yeah, so so the scripture says love God with your heart, mind, body, and soul. Yes. It's not just an emotional thing. It's not just yes. even a heartfelt thing. Yes. It's a mental process. Yes. Um, it's a mental action. And so when we love God with our mind, if our minds are still steeped in some kind of pathological disorder, mm. it is then impossible to love God completely with our minds because our minds are trapped in some kind of dysfunction. Yes. And if we can't love God and be open to God with our minds, then how can we mentally relate to ourselves and to other people? Wow. I mean, you have just laid out, as we would say, a theological discourse in mental health, and that's exactly what we're talking about. So you can definitely call in 678-528-9482. That's 678-528-9482. And we are definitely live here on the Therapeutic Conversation Show, and we're talking to Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel um, of the Victory for the World Church in Stone Mountain, my pastor, and we're just sharing, and you know, and we're just sharing with you all about mental health, and that is so powerful. And this dysfunction, you know, and and this is something else that I want to bring up too, that you really are a mastermind when it comes to critical thinking. So even putting that into the church. What is that? Because you've used that term ever since I've known you in some ways about critical thinking. Where are we as a church? We're going to talk about mental health because we got to deal with that first. Mm -hmm. But we also want to talk about, you know, while I have you here, what, where do, what's your vision? Where do you see us as an African-American church? I mean, we're, we're people of God, period, regardless of race, class, culture, gender, or sexual orientation. But I want to look at it from an aspect of, you know, you've been around, you have all this experience. What is this critical thinking piece in the church? So I think, again, Jesus challenges us to use our minds in the service of God and mm. in the service of humanity. Yes. Uh, on one occasion, Jesus said to the disciples, how is it that you can discern the patterns of the weather, but you cannot discern the patterns of your own behavior? <laughs> how is it that you can tell when it's going to rain, when it's going to be sunny, mm. but you cannot read, uh, um, uh, you cannot read um, the meaning of your own actions, yes. and you cannot discern um, what uh, people's actions mean, mm. or even what your own actions mean. Yes. So Jesus is calling us to, and, and then he says to them, he says, you be the judge. Mm. You, you judge your own actions. You judge your own thoughts. You judge your own behavior. Yes. But how can you do that if you're not in a continuing process of self-reflection, uh -oh. self-critique? <laughs> How can you do that? As a matter of fact, how can you even engage in any kind of self-development if you have not engaged in any kind of self-critique? Oh, my. And see, and that speaks right there, Dr. Samuel, to even clinical pastoral education, CPE, something that we do, you know, that I'm a supervisor and I train, but, but that reflective piece. So people are going through all kinds of dysfunction, all kinds of situations, life experiences, ups and downs, challenges, and they never, we never take time to sit and reflect upon 
what really happened to us? And, and that deals with trauma, too. Precisely. And look at the results. Look at how many people uh, are in abusive relationships mm. and never reflect on what that means and what their agency is to do something oh about my, it. Yes. And so as a result, people carry around hurts. As we know, hurting people hurt people. Mm -hmm. I recently watched, and it broke my heart, the documentary Surviving R. Kelly. Yes. And how sad that we have another example of a person who was molested himself mm. at age seven. Yes. And then grew up to allegedly be a molester and yes. hurt several people. Yes. It is because we are not taking time uh, to critically reflect, look at ourselves, evaluate what has happened to yes. us, yes. and evaluate our agency to make positive changes. Yes. I think there the church has a critical role yes. because the church is a confessing, convicting community. Wait, hold on. Say that again now. They're getting this. You said the church is what? The church is a confessing, convicting community in the sense that you come to church, and I say this, you know, in society people say, well, you know, you're innocent till proven guilty. Uh -huh. In the church, everybody's guilty. We already <laughs> know it because the Bible says we all have sinned and fallen short. All right. So now. the only question in the church is, is, are we honest Ooh. about our guilt? And oh. are we willing to do anything about our dysfunctions? Yeah, and I think that's, and, and I also think that that honesty links to another part of your ministry that you do when it comes to this inclusion in me, and you may call it something else too, but, but you know, you know, what really, one of the components that drew me to your ministry years ago, because I've known you at least almost 20 years from yeah. Howard, you used to do the sexuality conferences oh, yeah. when I was a seminary years ago, student, and when I, yeah, 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 and you used to do those, and um, and you remember the time we had the, uh, uh, she was the Surgeon General uh, at the, oh yes, uh, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Elder. <laughs> Came. And what was that comment that uh, she said? At oh, the, gee, you remember was, I talking she, she, about she, she, she was so talking about things. protection and condoms is what oh, she was. Oh yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can remember, because she was so wonderful with yeah. uh, Dr. Carlton Beasley. And yes, Elder I was there. And, and she said, oh, yes, she said, um, <laughs> she said, she was talking about the church getting real. Yes. About teaching people about sexual health. Yes. And safer sex. Yes. And she says, you all can go through all of this about, you know, we're going to be abstinent. We're going to be abstinent. Uh -huh. She said, you better use the condom. Yes. She said, because your vow of abstinence will break before the condom. <laughs> I was there when she said it, and so I know she and said it. several preachers got yes, upset, but they I left said amen, Dr. Elvis, <laughs> because it was the truth. Exactly. And so, it's still the truth. So you've been at this work a long time, and, and and when we talk about this, you know, just critical thinking, but also this inclusion, and I made statements that the church doesn't do well with conversations or therapeutic conversations around sex and also sexuality. Inclusion is just not about sex, sure. but, but it is a part of sexuality. So what is this definition of inclusion for some of the people that have not heard of it? So I think the definition of inclusion is simply that you cannot put anyone outside of the love and the affirmation and the saving grace of God in Christ Jesus. Mm. To me, that's what it means, that wow. no one is excluded. And certainly no one can be excluded because of his or her race, gender, or sexual orientation. Yes. Because we know, and science, I mean, has now pretty much been conclusive about this, mm -hmm. that sexual orientation is a genetic function, yes. not a matter of choice or conditioning. Yes. Um, and so dealing with that, we have to understand that God makes no mistakes. Mm. We are all made in God's image. Yes. But God's image is reflected in, 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 in a variety of forms yes. because God is a God of diversity. Yes. Uh, and if God, did not, if God didn't love diversity, she wouldn't have made so much of it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, Dr. Sam. We got to stop for a second. We are just jumping in on stuff. Please, you all, we are jumping in on it. I mean, we're talking about critical thinking, and you also made a statement years ago about about that that we think about everything else, but when we come to church, we leave our brains in the car, and you know, sure, or, or, you at know, the door. yeah, at you know, at the door. And I think that these are vital conversations. So let's give a shout out to some people that are joining us: Rob Jerome, Chelsea Payne, Cookie Payne is on. Digging Barbara um, Ingram is on. Hey, hey, Digging, how are hey, you? Hey, Digging Barbara Ingram. Yes, uh, and we have. 
Miss Denise is on Denise Cobbs. So, and they are just sending comments and likes and stuff. Please share this. We are live. You can definitely call. You know, sometimes even if you need to call, just give us a shout out. Just say hello or give us a comment on here. Or if, or, or if you have a question, um, um, Minister Carol Moss Minister is Carol Moss. is on and watching, and many people. Are, I mean, so if you're watching, just say you're watching. Say you're getting something because I know that their numbers are high, but I don't know everybody that's on, and I want to definitely give you a shout out if I can. But we're still having this wonderful therapeutic conversation about inclusion, about critical. So let's go back, though, because we're going to talk about the future and where the Victory for the World Church is and and is headed and your ministry is headed and what your legacy is. And, and, and I want to be clear, legacy is not people that are just going to transition today because Dr. Samuel still got a whole lot of things to do and a whole lot of life left. But um, but legacy is still we're building it. Sure. We're living it and, and we're doing milestones and and uh, work for God, oh, you know, and it's always building, you know, building upon. So I want to go back. So Ebenezer is where you got started in ministry as far as your order, license and order, ordination. Yes, when I was a seminarian at The, the at, historical <laughs> yes, Ebenezer. When I was a, a seminarian at Candler School of Theology at Emory University, yeah. um, I joined Ebenezer Baptist Church under Dr. Joseph L. Roberts. Okay. Um, Martin Luther King Sr. was still pastor emeritus. Wow. They were so warm. They were so welcoming of me becoming a Baptist. I'm actually Kojic Church of God. All Pentecostal, right now, Kojic. But I, but I became a Baptist <laughs> because I was drawn to the social gospel message Okay, so that's uh, that, through I'm, Dr. I'm King and, of course, through Ebenezer. Yeah. And Dr. King and uh, Senior mm -hmm. and Dr. Roberts were so warm and welcoming. Mm -hmm. They uh, put me on staff, worked with me as a minister, yeah. helped to mold and to guide me. I even had the chance to work with and meet Mrs. Coretta Scott King oh, while wow. she was still alive. Uh, Ebenezer is still Such a wonderful a church, and I'm just forever thankful for how they welcomed me and helped me to get started in ministry. Yeah, that's just, and so then from there, what did you do? Cause, cause so I graduated from uh, seminary in 1981, Okay. and I was called to a little church in Scottsdale, Georgia. All right now. Called Traveler's Rest Baptist Church. <laughs> Traveler's uh, Rest. And I was there for a while, uh, but when I was called to the church, the church was wrestling with the issue of relocation. Okay. Some members wanted it to stay in the Scottsdale community. Others wanted it to move out into what we call the greater DeKalb community, okay. where in the early 1980s, 80s, many blacks were moving to a okay. growing black middle class. And uh, so we were able to work out um, an agreement that those persons who wanted to stay in Scottsdale at Traveler's Rest could do so. But those who wanted to move um, into Greater DeKalb, which mm -hmm. is where many blacks were moving and growing, could yeah. do so. So we found some property over on Snapfinger Road, yeah. bought that property, and I named that church New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. All right. And, uh, Wait, hold on. Hold on. You said what? New Birth? New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, yes. Is it still in existence? New, new, new birth? birth is still there today, uh, <laughs> not and not in that location. Yeah, of course, it's moved out to Lithonia. Uh, uh, Dr. Jamal Bryan is now a pastor, but uh, yeah, I started New Birth. I was actually riding along in my car one day, listening to a song. Um, yes, it's newborn again. I'm newborn yeah. again. Yeah, I'm so free and ha I said I'm gonna name the church New Birth. New Birth. And then took the idea to at that time the uh, uh, Baptist State President, Dr. Cameron Alexander, yes. who recently recently deceased, Position, yeah. Antioch North Baptist Church, and he said you got to put missionary in it. So I went back and put put missionary, and so it became New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. So people, you know, and as I said, I'm not stirring up stuff, but you know, here we just go on. <laughs> so you have, so you're the one that God had given the vision initially for New Birth, is what you're saying? Oh, sure, yeah. That you definitely. were the pastor, definitely before and, and Eddie Long. Before Eddie Long, I was Eddie Long's predecessor. Wow. Uh, so and the and the church hit at the right time demographically. Blacks were moving in. It was just the right time, you know, because church growth is all about your demographics as well. Yes, it is. In addition to your message and your ministry, you got to have the community to draw from. Wow. And so uh, New Birth at that time was one of the first black Baptist churches in the entire what we call greater North DeKalb, or greater uh, DeKalb area, area South DeKalb yeah. area. So it hit at the right time. We began to grow. And, um, you know, when I left, we were seeing uh, seven, 700 or so members every Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And Miss Elgertine Dudley uh, says uh, 
History Lesson New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. So there are people watching that know about that, but 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 sure. some of this new generation, and that's what we got to be talking about. You know, we got to know some history. We don't know history, and we just think that you know, and and no, you know disrespect to to the late you know bishop eddie long but you started that work you yes. started doing that and a lot of people may not know that i mean so you just have had ministry birthed out of you period and then you went to uh to start victory now what was the 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 concept what did god give you for victory for the world church i know it was victory missionary baptist then right no, or, we, were, we started well, out baptist. We, we started out victory victory uh, victory baptist. baptist okay and i really um uh, organized the Victory Church with an idea toward inclusion because, quite frankly, oh. the officers at New Birth were not willing to be inclusive. Oh. And oh. so when I started Victory, I started with an idea of being inclusive okay. um, and then found out that, unfortunately, the Baptist Convention itself was not supportive of inclusion okay and then took a further move to move victory into the united church of christ which i believe is the most or one of the most inclusive uh progressive christian denominations in i the agree world. i agree with you because i'm one of the ministers too <laughs> at you know for uh the, you know for the united church of christ and god is still speaking god is still and, speaking and that and you know that's the statement that we're putting out you know god is still speaking and and moving and and you know and the and someone said you know when i was in seminary that you know the bible the canon is still being written we are writing we're living epistles as paul certainly, said certainly. into this life and we have to look at it in those ways that we are still still moving. God is still moving, but we're moving with God, with spirit. And you're right, and, Dr. Jones. Yeah. That's why the book of Acts has no formal ending. <laughs> Romans yes. ends with amen, revelation, amen. Yeah. Other, uh, there's a formal ending. Acts yeah. is still being written because it is the acts of the apostles. Yeah. And God is still moving and acting through the apostles for the disciples, yeah. for the followers of Jesus Christ. And so we're just catching up. So we got some more people that have joined. We have Richard Williams. Thank you for joining us. Minister Carol Moss. Hey, Minister Carol Moss is on. And Minister uh, Kimberly Smith Ewing. Um, hey, Kimberly. Hey, how are you? Minister you Kimberly. Uh, Dr. Teresa Holt. Uh, uh, Brenda, hey, yeah. hey, Bree, you know, that's your name we call you, right? Sister Brenda Bree. King is on and watching. So please share, please share. Everybody's enjoying it. Any questions you have, please, please, uh, you know, put it in the Facebook comments. But thank you all for joining us. We still have time. We're continuing this conversation. We've talked about dealing with deep dysfunction, Dr. Uh, Kenneth L. Samuel's sermon. We talked about the history and this new birth thing that, because um, I even looked also on the website for new birth and I didn't see anything about the history. And I think that we do ourselves an unjust, I mean, a, a disservice when we do not have the history of, you know, where did this come? Because it just, just you know, people think, honestly, that, Bishop, you know, the late Bishop Eddie Long started New Birth. And I'm just glad we're putting it out on the, you know, on the airwaves, on social media, that Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel was the start of New Birth. But, you know, but God moves and, and challenges Certainly. us and, you know, and then Victory for the World Church now stands 32 years, Certainly. you know, this year, and congratulations on that. Thank but you. talk about victory and and where is, you know, why would someone come to Victory for the World Church? Of course, I can answer the question <laughs> because I know the power that's there and what God has been doing over the last 10 years. I've been there. and um, and But, I mean, talk a little bit about that. So to your point about Where's going the history, I'll just say that God mm -hmm. uses all of us as God wills. Exactly. And, uh, you know, to acknowledge one person's contribution is not in any way to take away from another person's exactly. contribution. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, to God be the glory for the history of new birth, the history of victory. You yeah. asked me about victory. Yeah. We started in 1987. Wow. And uh, so this is our 32nd year. And um, uh, our our mission at Victory is to serve this present age mm. from that old song, A Charge to Keep Our Hand. All right, now, to that's a Baptist serve song. this present <laughs> age, my calling to fulfill. And Victory seeks to serve this present age because we invite people not to check their brains at the door, mm. but to bring their minds, their questions, their thoughts, their reflections, their issues, even their dysfunctions even their fears you go. into the church so that we can work out our soul salvation. Yes. So we invite questions. We invite dialogue. Yes. And I try to preach messages that will move people and challenge people to think critically and then to speak. 
oh. about what it is um, um, is happening to them, what God is showing them, so that together we can form the kind of uh, connections yes. and workshops like the one you provide on yes. mental health yes. so that people can get the help. And then we have no qualms about saying that some people need to have some professional help beyond the services that even the church can provide. Yes, yes. Because I know what my focus is. My yes. focus is to preach the gospel exactly. of the good news in theology. But people who are in in, in serious need of, of, of therapy, both mm. mental and physical, yes. people who would do well to speak to a licensed, trained, yes. professional Amen. counselor, Amen. need to do that. <laughs> and we need to take away that stigma mm. so that people can get the help that they need. Yes. If not, we're going to continue to see people who go to church yeah. and then leave church deeply damaged. Yes, and 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 people are, you know, and people are suffering in silence. We love to have a mask and we love to hide the pain, the suffering, the dysfunction, the the trauma. You Indeed. know, some people are in some dangerous situations, even in relationships that I see in the practice. And then, you know, and these are churchgoers. These are people that go to church, not just at Victory, but I'm saying at, at churches sure. at large. Right. And they're struggling. They're suffering in silence. We have domestic violence, you know, going on. We have child, sex, abuse. child abuse, sexual assault, you know, yes. discrimination. People are even being traumatized at work, dealing with, you know, you know, work violence and work and, violence. and the sexual harassment and all the other things that are going Issues on. Issues of self-identity. Yes, yes, and really understand. Wrestling and with sexuality, wrestling with history uh, and families. Mm. There are just so many issues that we have to broach if we're going to get the healing that yes. God wants to give us. And that's what we're talking about today. And we have Pamela. Hey, Pamela, you on the choir. Yes. Yeah, at Victory. So so welcome, Alice. Hey, Pam. Yeah, Alice Robinson is the one. Thank you for joining us. And and uh, and Pamela says, speak the truth. So we speak in the truth. Dr. Teresa Hall says, I remember that. Thank God for the real teachings. And then uh, Minister uh, Kim says, hey, Doc, love you. So, you know, I mean, so love we. all of you as well. Yeah, so we are just, you know, reaching out and we're talking. This is a powerful conversation. And I know you're going to have to come back and just, just talk more because, you know, I'm just hearing. I'm hearing the mental health, but I'm also hearing the social justice as well as the inclusion part of that and so that's the victory for the world church right there and you know and a place that you you know you said in this present age say that again to serve this, to present, serve this present, age. present age that means all of the you know from a mind body and spirit perspective because you know dr jones if we don't serve this present age the church is going to be left behind yes say um, more about the that church, you know we, we, we are past the time when people just went to church because our parents made us or it was the thing yes, to do. Yes. The church has got to prove its relevancy. Mm -hmm. The church has got to speak to real issues. Yeah. The church has got to let everyone know that he or she has a voice and yes. a place yes. in the family of faith. Yes. And the church has got to be about the business of helping people to meet and, and people, truth always stands. And Jesus said, and Jesus says the truth will set, set you, you free. free. Come on now. Look, Dr. Samuel preaching up in here, and he's gonna be preaching tomorrow. So y'all definitely need to, you know, check out the that, you know, Victory for the World Church in Stone Mountain. How can they reach? I mean, I know that there is um, you know, the website. Yes. And, and definitely we'll put it on it. I mean, you know what we'll, certainly Victory for the World, the S T N M T N. Okay. All right, on Facebook. On Facebook. Um uh, Victory for the World dot org. Okay. And 1117 North Harrison Road in Stone Mountain, Georgia. In Stone Mountain, Georgia. You can just Google it. And what time is service? I know. <laughs> 10 a.m. 10 a.m. services. And so definitely we want to definitely make sure that, you know, that you join uh, Victor for the World Church. And, and, and I know that they're going to be, I'm just putting it out there because this is my job. But, you know, but, uh, but you, know, you know, I know at one time we were on television and everything, but we're going to start doing more of that because this message to. of inclusion, this message message of love and even you come in here today for the love that you have for me and the work you know and our relationship as well as just the truth Dr. Samuel and I just want to say you really have a heart for people you know you really have a heart that you want to see people transformed and changed and you know and even at Victory they're also doing some financial workshops out here you know I mean I've seen advertised Certainly. as I was there about finances. We try to do all that we can because uh, let's face it uh, it's it's you know, people have faith, but sometimes our finances are jacked up. Yeah. And so we got to have some concerted 
uh, effort and resources available yeah. to help people with credit repair. Yes. Because if your credit is bad, yes. you can be the most wonderful, <laughs> faithful person in the world, but your options, even your ability to give, yeah. to support your family, exactly. to support the causes that you love are limited because of your bad credit. Yeah. And so we have credit workshops where wow. professionals come in yes. and help persons with their credit. Come on, we've yeah. all been there. We yeah. all we all have you know issues yeah. with, with, with spending and budgeting. And so mm -hmm. we try to provide that help. We try to provide mm -hmm. help for people to understand the yeah. importance of of, um, of 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 building equity, yeah. um, uh, uh, of, of of retirement, mm. of savings and investments, mm -hmm. because all of these things help us to become whole and help us to become productive yeah. in our Christian walk. Exactly. So those are just some of the things. And then I was there last Sunday and, and we talked, you know, I mean, there was an offering taken for the uh, governmental workers that are, you know, furloughed or shut down. Um, thank God is getting ready to reopen you know, from God. what I see. Yes. And um, but, you know, there was an offering taken and and, you know, and even supporting, you know, persons that, you know, ha have been affected by Indeed. that. And those checks, even thank God, as you say, the we're back open Hopefully, yeah, we stay open. And stay open, uh, I know. But, you know, uh, the, 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 the heart of the people at Victory are so generous. Mm. We sent out checks. We gave out checks this week mm. uh, to persons who uh, were working for, uh, in government positions yes. without being paid. We gave checks anywhere from two hundred to five hundred dollars yes. to persons in need. Of course, based on the need and based on our availability. Yeah. But I'm just so thankful that our church could yes. be could, could could be a uh, could be a resource yes. for persons who needed help and still need help and can and could get it. Yeah, and that is what the Victory for the World Church is all about. So people who are just joining, this is the Therapeutic Conversation. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Jones, LPC, and we're talking with Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel, the pastor of Victory for the World Church in Stone Mountain, Georgia. So please you know, Google them, find them. I mean, find us because I mean, I, I am definitely a part of the church. But I mean, but this is just a powerful conversation that we have. And uh, Bree, uh, Brenda says, "Victory for the World Church!" Yay! <laughs> you, you're definitely a promoter of victory, so we appreciate your contribution. Is there, are there any questions that you have for Dr. Samuel? If you can definitely post them down here. As I said, we've been talking about social justice. We've been talking about inclusion. We've been talking about critical thinking. Um, you know, in the church, we've been talking about how to deal with all this this dysfunction that we have. You know, inner and interpersonal dysfunction. I would say that. You know, in our world in our society. Um, we talked about the history of, you know, from Ebenezer to New Birth to Victory for the World Church, how that got started and how that is continuing 32 years. That's a long time. To That's be, to be, because people didn't say. Look, there's a song <laughs> said, you know, we didn't know you, you were going to make it, you know, but you're still here today, right? Indeed, by you the know, grace of God, by the grace and of by God, by the support of a lot of good people like yourself and so many others. Yeah, Dr. Jones. you know, as I said, I was just a boy when I started, so I've learned a lot, I've grown, but it has been the joy of my life yes. to serve God's people, and uh, you know, we're not through yet. We, yeah, they're asking when on. are you going to do your next book? Uh, Minister Kim is asking that. <laughs> I'm asking the same question, and. Amber, thank you for joining us. She's in the choir, That's too. A great question. Amber, my stepfather and my mother. Hey, Mom. Hey, stepfather. Hey, hey William. Um, um, and Ella Smith is on. Hey, Ellis. So I'm going to take about two or three good months and focus on that book. All right, that's now. That's what I need to do. All right, and that's what he's going to be doing, so we so we got our answer. Is there any other questions for Dr. Samuel? Otherwise, we just we still got a few, you know, a few more minutes, 678-528-9482. That's 678-528-9482. You can call in live. We are live here in the studio today. But as I said, we've just been talking about the work, the life, the legacy of Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel and the Victory for the World Church. And, you know, and another thing that I just like about Victory is even though it is considered a mega church in some you know in some uh, ways and some definition, it is still a down home, um, warm feeling and inviting church, and that's what I like about Victory. Not just serving as a minister there, and um, you know all of these years, and just being associated there um, with the ministry, but I love that it's it still a it still has a down home feeling, and what I mean by that is that people will love on you. They will accept you, that nobody's sitting there trying to judge you and tell you. And one thing that you said when I, and I'm going to share this too publicly, when I first came to the church, I had came, you know, from different churches and I had been 
um, you know, uh, just had some challenges with pastors. You know, it's just, you know, and it's not just, you know, I'm not down at all my former pastors now out there, but just some challenges in trusting pastors. And one thing that you said, and I don't even know whether you remember this, I came to you and I, and I told you, I said, I really don't trust pastors and stuff. And one thing you said, you said, uh, you know, I was reverend then, I wasn't doctor, but then you said uh, you have an open door. And you said, I'm here to speak and talk to you about, you know, things. And, you know, when you're ready, you know, I would love for you to be a part of the ministerial staff. But you said, I have an open door. You know, my door is always open if you have a concern or question. And then you talked, you know, briefly about about uniting and that, you know, that you were there to listen to what I had to say. You wasn't just going to blot out my comments. And that's what I feel at Victory um, is that that love is there. You know, regardless, we have, you know, the motherboard. I call them, you know, Mother Lucille. (laughs) Shouts out to you out there. And there's all of the mothers. Uh, Mother Sherman, she's, you know, probably watching and uh, because she watched every week. And just other mothers. I don't want to start calling names, but all of you all I love. And the Diggins board, you know, just all of the people there that just love on you. And it takes a community. You know, not n- none of us have all the answers. Yes. Pastors, uh, it, none of us have all the answers. That's why God calls us together. Yes. That's why Jesus says two or three of y'all two get or together three. and I'll be in the midst. <laughs> yes. Because there's power in community. Yes. There's, 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 uh, there's, there, there, there's the ability for us to talk to one another, yes. to listen to one yes. another, to learn from one another, yes. and to grow together. Yes. And I think that's the power uh, of, of, of church community yes. and what we try to do at Victory Church. Yes, and as we minister, you know, and, I mean, and, you know, and as Victory ministers and you also, you know, being the leader, they are ministers. What do you see for the future, Dr. Samuel, for, you know, where are we headed in the future? You've been around a long time. You're definitely, a, I mean, not a pioneer. You're a legendary uh, minister in the community. That's a long time to just, I mean, you've been pastoring longer than 32 years, but that's a long time to have given your life to ministry. Where are we headed? What are you seeing in this present age as we're ministering to this present age? What are you seeing? So what I, are you feeling in your spirit? So I think coming coming in the, in the coming days and decades for the church, I think there's already less of an emphasis on buildings and grounds. Gotcha. Um, you know, that whole paradigm of, you know, who has the biggest edifice is no longer really relevant. The question is, who's speaking to the concerns, the contemporary, the real pressing Mm -hmm. concerns of people? So I think that the church is going to have to move into areas of uh, broader technology, Mm. which is what you're doing. And it speaks to your vision and how God is using you, the fact that you're Mm. using even this medium to reach people who, for whatever reason, might not come to the church building, but are still being benefited by the message of the gospel. So we're going to have to look seriously at that invest dollars in that. And then I think we're going to have to have some serious conversations with millennials yes. and Gen X, Y, Z. Yes, all of them. <laughs> about, <laughs> you know, about what they need mm. and, about what, uh, and about what would motivate them to be a yes. part of the church. Yes. Because, you know, as I say, the days when you just went to church because it was a thing to do and mm. your parents made you are over. Yes. We have to give people reason yes. to get up and be a part. Yes. And if we show them that church is a way where your life can be enhanced yes. by being a part of a community of compassion, a community that allows you to think through issues, yes. a community that empowers you Powers, yes. to make the positive changes that you need to make in your yes. life, then I think we're going to have to do that. So we're still exploring ways. And exactly. They're, and they're going to have to be in church, going to have to be in small groups. Yes. It's going to have to be through media, yes. uh, several ways as we move into uh, the coming decades and, and keep the church uh, relevant in the minds and hearts of people. Exactly. And and people are just commenting left and right. Angela Dean, LPC with me, my practice partner. So you say wonderful to see and hear the two of us. <laughs> to my, the favorite educator, my pastor and practice partner. Um, and um, and so, and Angela, thank you for, and you said such an important conversation Bless for such a time as this. Love both of you. Love you too, Angela. Love thank you, you too, for joining Angela. us. Love you too. And, 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 you know, and so we, uh, and everybody's commenting on, you know, victory. I mean, I mean, it's there. Victory is definitely a place of love, of peace, of, you know, and you can just be yourself. 
that's another thing that we, I think, is dangerous in the church when people cannot come and be honest about who they are and who they love and, and you know, and, and just be themselves, be authentic, and, and you accept it, you know, for that. So we have a choice. We can promote honesty or we can promote hypocrisy. <laughs> And Wait, it, hold on, Dr. Sable. Say that again. <laughs> we have a choice. As, a, as church people, we have a choice. As church leaders, we have a choice. Yes. We can promote honesty or we can promote hypocrisy. Yeah. If we do not promote honesty, if we do not help people to understand mm. that church is the place and space for you to take off your presumptions, for you to take off your uh, your you know, whatever it is, your baggage, yes. and get real with yourself and other people and be honest about who you are, who you love, what, what draws you, what repels you. Mm. If that's not the case, then we're going to be breeding hypocrisy and dysfunction oh, and DL behavior yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. <laughs> and that's the real blasphemy. You, and you said all of it in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. That people, the crazy things people do yes. in the name of Jesus yeah. because they won't be honest. Exactly. And, and that's what's hurting and killing us, especially in the African-American community. Indeed. So it's just powerful, powerful conversation. Um, talking to Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel, Victory for the World Church, you definitely need to reach out to Victory for the World Church. Also, their Bible study is on social media yes, every indeed. Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, we do what uh, time? Bible. We usually do it at seven thirty. Because I watch it. I don't. I have, I have a practice here, as y'all know. But I'll be watching. And, and, it's, and it's on Facebook Live. And uh, what time again? Uh, seven thirty. Seven thirty. So you can um, definitely. And watch when it. I'm out of town, I just do it on my own through my own yeah. little Facebook page, and that can be any time. But you can catch it on Wednesdays. Just look for it on Wednesdays. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's uh, Victory uh, for the World, uh, Victory Stone Mountain, S-T-N-M-T-N. -T -N. There you go. And we're going to definitely put it in the comments. Also, Tanya Dudley, thank you for joining us. Pamela says, uh, honesty versus hypocrisy. All right, that's a message right there. I mean, that is powerful. And this is, you know, as we wrap up in a few minutes, this is what we're talking about, being relevant for the present age, you know, and really helping people and loving people. But one thing, you know, about it is that we also are in conversation and we're in relationship. And being in relationships, there's always changes. You know, there's always a conversation. If something doesn't work, we can always evaluate, not just self-evaluate, number one, but number two, we can evaluate what we do. And one thing I do like about Victory, and I've been in um, executive meetings with, uh, you know, at the church, and you all, you know, evaluate every program. Indeed. You say the positive things that happen and the opportunities for growth, you know, or say, okay, next year we may do this a little differently Indeed. because that didn't get the result that we want. And every week you all are constantly reevaluating the ministry and what is being done from a financial standpoint, but not just that, but from a ministerial standpoint. Indeed. How can we improve it? How can we be more effective? Yeah. How can we reach people? How can we make it better. Yeah. Again, that's a part of our self-critique, self-reflection. Yeah. And it's also a way, Dr. Jones, that we hold one another accountable. Oh, because my. accountability that is, is a so word true. that people don't like. Mm -hmm. But accountability is important. Yes, it Let is. Let me tell you, if you're, if you're in a workout regimen, it's good to have a workout partner. <laughs> yes, it because is. Because that workout partner is going to hold you accountable. Yes, And when yes. you don't feel like getting up, you don't feel like going, <laughs> that workout partner is going to say, oh, no, it's time to go. Yep. we got to hit the gym. It's, it's time to do it, <clears throat> which I need to be then doing you know, that. Y'all been talking about me. I'm just joking. And in terms of our <laughs> Christian development and growth, we need people around us yes. who are praying with us, praying for us, mm. but also saying, my brother, we can work this out. Yeah. You can do better. Yes. And I'm going to help you. Yes. And we're going to walk this together yes. so that we can improve and make the adjustments and yes. the improvements that we need to make. Yes. All of that's a part of our accountability. Yes. And the church is a community yes. of accountability. Of accountability. We're accountable to God. Yes. But we're also our brothers and our sisters keeper. Yes. So we're also accountable to one another. Yes. And that is so true. So definitely reach out to the Victory for the World Church, Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel, you know, and, and I know he's going to be doing more social media things. I'm inviting him and, and encouraging him and supporting him in whatever God has as far as as you know getting the word out there because sometime in ministry you know and I'm going to say this Dr you know Samuel is one of the you know sometimes it's a hidden treasure that a lot of people don't know about but we want to definitely get the word out we also I'm putting it out in the universe too about uh, you know some conference down the road about critical thinking helping the church helping ministers because you are a a mentor to a lot of pastors and ministers and a lot of times we're seeing ministry burnout we're seeing 
helping people Indeed. like, okay, I don't want to go to, you know, when I go to seminary, I get a, you know, I'm pastoring a church and I'm stressed out. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them call you and, and he is available, you all. So y'all can definitely contact the church. I mean, for workshops. I mean, you Indeed. be around the nation, around the world talking about, um, you know, just your, your life, but also you're gifted in, in, in mentorship and helping people to talk about those areas where they're struggling. Um, pastors and ministers, contact Dr. Samuel. Get get that type of mentorship. Everybody needs a mentor. I have a mentor. He's one of my mentors. I have, uh, of course, I have uh, my mother, too, you know, or my spiritual mother, Dr. Uh, Barbara King at, at Hillside, too. But I'm saying I have other mentors, too, that have mentored me and continue to mentor me and also hold me accountable and call me to the side if they see something that, I, you know, areas I need to grow in and I appreciate it but I but I mean I want y'all to definitely reach out to Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel and the Victory for the World Church because he is available out you know in the community to come to your church to come to your you know spiritual center and do trainings and talk about his life and ministry and just for consultation sometimes we just need consultation we need you know guidance and so I know that you're available to be able to do that and also preach I mean I mean you know we have a Jew and we have to value people while while we are in this present age, while we're in this experience, and I just think it's awesome. So definitely reach out to him. He has this, you know, definitely for his ministry for the Victory for the World Church, but he has his own ministry, too, of just going out in the community, because that's what we're all about. Going out in the community, doing workshops. I've been a part of numerous of your workshops, and you're a mastermind, even when it comes to just workshops and just, you know, supporting people in this, this social justice and this inclusion. And we have something else in common. When I enrolled, I didn't even realize that we had something else to come. We both are graduates of the United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. In Dayton, Ohio. So Shout you, out to United. Yes, yeah, so we're alumni of that, you know, and so we both have, you know, have our Doctor of Ministry degrees from there, and it's just been, mm-hmm. I mean, and I enrolled, I didn't even think about it, but you see how everything is in divine order. Mm-hmm. So shouts out to uh, to that, and also we want to advertise that, you know, you know, Dr. Samuel is definitely an educator, and we want to put out, you know, anybody who's interested in a doctor of ministry from United Theological Seminary, the seminary that we both have graduated from. We are forming some cohorts and trying to be in conversations around. And both uh, of us will be happy to work yes, with you. Yes, yes, and we're trying to form a cohort. And so anybody who has a Master's of Divinity that have been in ministry, please reach out to us. You can definitely reach out to me at um, at the Joshua Generation Care and Consulting Services. You can uh, definitely email me. Send me an email, Brian Jones, B-R-Y-N-J-O-N-E-S, L-P-C at gmail.com if you're interested in a doctoral cohort you know a doctor of ministry but we're going to be specializing in mental health but we're going to be also talking about social justice and inclusion so if you're interested in that program please email let someone know there are a lot of us that need to be trained in those areas and also uh, benefit from Dr. Samuel's mentorship in that cohort. So we're forming it. It's not official, but we got to get some people together and then we can go to the school and say, hey, this is what we want to do and it'll be fully approved. So we're definitely, you know, there are areas. There's no reason why people cannot get educated, cannot get knowledgeable about things and why not learn from, you know, and I consider you an expert and I'm an expert in my field. Experts learn from the experts. <laughs> you and know, if we're not experts. We certainly have we some gonna experience get, yes, we can share with you. Yes, and we're gonna get the you know you know get Indeed. the help and the support Indeed. as we're in conversation. But this, I'm telling you, I'm so excited that you've been here today. You know, this is the therapeutic conversation show, and we're having conversations around mental health, spirituality, and empowerment. Dr. Samuel, you have laid it on us. You've talked about self reflection. You talked about evaluating things. You've talked about the needs of the church and that victory for the world church. And your ministry is about serving this present age of, you know, of the needs, mind, body, and spirit. You've talked about mental health. I mean, you laid a whole theological discourse about mental health and how it's important and how it goes hand in hand. It's not separate. It all goes hand in hand. Um, to that, I mean, you talked about your own uh, history dealing with new, I mean, from Ebenezer, you know, to new birth, you know, and now to Victory for the World Church, 32 years in ministry. Now, as we close in a few minutes, what, you know, look at the camera and what do you want people to know? What do you want people to leave this conversation? And y'all going to see more and more of Dr. Kenneth L. Sam, you're on social media, I'm telling you. But I mean, but what do you want people to know? about, you know, and, and I just want you to take a few minutes to just talk to the audience and, you know, what's in your spirit? 
That's what I'm going to say. Thank you, Dr. Jones. I, I really do have a heart for people. And I think that there has been so much criticism of the church, many of it, quite frankly, justified. Um, and I'm just, my prayer is that as we move um, uh, into the 21st century, even the more, that, <clears throat> that we do not cast the church aside because there's still so much potential for growth and for good. And we're going to certainly have to um, adapt uh, through technology and change many of our forms and outreach. But I think that there will always be a need for human community where persons can come for honest reflection and spiritual affirm affirmation and godly direction and conversion. Um, how that plays out in the coming days and decades is going to be interesting. But I just want to invite everyone to still say, stay engaged and stay in tuned to what God is doing through the church as we move into these critical times. Um, and I'm just still excited to be a part and to see how God will unfold God's love and God's next revelation because God is indeed still speaking. Yes, and that is a powerful word that God is still speaking and God is still moving. And also, I'm going to put, you know, we got a few more minutes. I'm also putting out there that choir <laughs> under the direction of Minister Philip David Hill. That choir will definitely encourage you when you come in the door, too. And one thing I like about the choir, you know, too, is that, you know, we sing hymns. You we know, because hymns. a lot of times we just, and nothing's wrong with praise teams and things, but we do sing hymns, hymn. you know, as come, well as the, uh, of yes, and, and even, Christ, you know, solid rock all right now, all other, what? Yes, all other ground <laughs> is sinking sand. So Lift we, them up. <laughs> Lift the Savior up. Good old hymn. Yes, and those, like and those things help us, you know, because all of it is needed. It's almost like, you know, the late Miles uh, Jones, you know, I was in his class at Virginia Union on one of the... There's a premier uh, preachers, ministers, you can Google him. Um, and he was talking the last uh, few weeks of his life. He came to our class and, and talked. And he said a sermon has three components. It is a statement of faith. It is drawn from a tradition. And it expresses the authentic being of the preacher. Mm. And I that like is that. what, and I'm going to say that again for the ones that oh, maybe didn't cool. catch that. Dr. Miles Jones said he said that a sermon, and we are living sermons, we're living epistles as well, but a sermon or a life, I would, I'm adding that part into it, can you know, reflect a statement of faith. So we are standing on faith. You know, you, you know, that is where we live. That's how we move. That's how we have our being. A statement of faith. It is drawn from a tradition, and we cannot forget the tradition because we are because of others that Precisely. have sacrificed. We stand on the shoulders and the backs of others that have sacrificed and have done for us. And then the part, the last part, it, it expresses the authentic being of the preacher. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that we are, have to be authentic in ministry. And there's nothing wrong with ministers getting counseling, therapy, professional help to support them because ministry is not easy. Ministry, ministry is risky business and, you know, and it involves mind, body, and spirit. And it's a lot of wear and tear that a lot of times ministers are not, you know, and pastors are not as apt to. So there's no reason why we can't get the support that we need, but it's built upon those three things. Indeed. Statement of faith, the authentic being of the preacher, and but drawn from a tradition. Precisely. Isn't that awesome? Yes, yeah, certainly. So you got the tradition there because, of course, the scripture is the tradition. Yeah. Uh, but that we're back to authenticity yeah. and honesty. Yeah. Shakespeare there you go. said to thine own self be true. <laughs> there you and go. And thou canst be false. And that nobody. unexamined life is what? That unexamined <laughs> life is not worth living. There you go. And Socrates. And so we just got to really begin to look at this. So it's been a wonderful conversation, Dr. Samuel. Thank just, you so I'm much. so glad that my mentor, my pastor has been here, has laid it out and has laid it down. Definitely join a Victory for the World Church. Um, definitely contact Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel through that medium there, 1170 North Harris. Preston Street, 10 a.m. service. Sunday so mornings. definitely join, listen to the choir, but listen to the powerful message by Dr. Kenneth L. Samuel and let the congregation love on you and support you because they accept you for who you are and where you are. We've talked about the social justice piece, that's for all, and also the inclusion piece and that self reflection. 
you know, and that critical thinking piece. So, again, if you're interested also, as I said, in that doctor of ministry, earning a, an accredited from ATS, uh, accredited doctor of ministry from United Theological Center. Accredited. Sin, accredited. I need to say that again. Accredited doctor of ministry from United Theological Seminary. Please reach out to me, and, and I would definitely. Uh, Pastor at victoryfortheworld.org. Yes, yes, or send a message there, you know, to talk about it because we're forming this cohort because this is vital for the next generation so know that but again thank you so much dr samuel for your time i know you have a busy schedule but your love for me and the work that i do and your support and your mentorship but thank you so much for joining thank you, today dr. jones and you keep on doing the great work that you're doing i'll be with you thank you all right this has been the therapeutic conversation show i'm your host dr brian jones please like our facebook page therapeutic conversation show thanks to 108 praise radio and this platform courtney and the staff we just thank you for all all that is going on, all of you all that have joined us, have looked at that, and I just think that we have to continue to uh, work together. You know, it takes mind, it's all about mind, body, and spirit, and this is the year of the transformation of the mind. This is what I've been putting out, and we are definitely here to transform, to change, so we can be all that God has created and called us to be for such a time as this. Amen. So be encouraged. Please join us every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., but please like our Facebook Facebook page. People are watching, but y'all not liking the Facebook page. Please share. Also, you can reach me at, at the, uh, the Joshua Generation, www.joshua-generation.net. You can definitely find me there. Um, and you can even just Google the Joshua Generation Care and Consultant Services, where we do provide mental health services, licensed professional mental health counseling for pastors as well as congregants and as well as the community, because a lot of us need professional licensed counseling, mental health counseling. So please reach out, join us, you know, and just support us. I also have a nonprofit, the Therapeutic, I mean, the Foundation for Therapeutic and Spiritual Empowerment Services. So definitely give. If you don't need counseling or you find with, count, you know, you know you've had counseling, support somebody else because that's Indeed. what it's all about is sowing a seed. And so definitely you can definitely reach um, and find out more information on my website for that. But again, thank you, Dr. Samuel, for joining. And then Dr. Samuel gets the final, final word because we got to go. <laughs> God bless you, Dr. Jones. Again, it takes, uh, it takes all of us working together. God has, God has called us for such a time as this to come together to do what we need to do to support one another, to love one another. We know love conquers all. And it's just good to know that whatever you're going through in life, you don't have to go through it alone because God has sent you people and community to walk with you. May God bless you, and may God keep all of us. Amen. Thank you, and thank you all for joining the Therapeutic Conversation Show. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Jones, LPC 108 Praise Radio. Because of you, I felt hopeless. Because you said rude things about my work, I started to question my own voice. I know it was a joke, but it still hurt me. Because of your negative comments online, I've almost quit doing the one thing that makes me happiest in life. Because you shared something about me that was private, I felt embarrassed. Because you said hi to me on the first day of school, I felt included and I knew that I was going to be okay. Because of you sharing your story with me, I feel comfortable sharing my own. Because you were there when I was coming out, you helped me regain my confidence. I'm still here today because of you. Because of you.